Now, we want to take this idea, right? We want to actually apply it. So let's go back to um, the 3D space that you've kind of drawn, and we're going to just draw uh, one octant of it for now. I need to catch up and actually draw one myself because we need to be able to, say for example, understand some of our old concepts like distance in terms of this 3D world. You know how to work out distance in a Cartesian plane. How do we do it? Say if I had some point A comma B comma C. I've got three coordinates, not two, because I'm in three dimensions, right? How would I find the distance to a point like that? Now, some of you already know the formula. Good for you. We need to know where it comes from and why it actually works. Which of these axes is which again? Which one's this one? X is coming out at you, right? This one we had laid down on the ground, it's Y, and that leaves Z in the vertical. Okay? Now, here's the tricky thing with going from 2D to 3D, right? On your Cartesian plane, if you put a spot like 5 on there, unambiguously, that's where it is. But if on your page you draw a point like, say, this, and say that is A, B, C, that gives you almost no information about where it actually is. Do you agree? This could be like in the front, in the octant we're looking at. It could be in the octant next door or the octant underneath and I'm just looking through it to see into what's going on. So here's the way I'm going to ask us to represent this. Let's see if I can do this well. I'm actually going to rub that off because I'm not going to end there. Our A, B and C, they're just going to be constants in the X and Y and Z directions. Okay. So let's deal with one at a time. If I want to move a units in the x direction, and again, like I said, if you've other colors, this will really help you. Start from the origin and draw with me a nice obvious vector, right? That goes in the x direction, just for simplicity, because I only drew the one octant here. Let's just assume a, b, and c are positive, okay? You can generalize this, it doesn't matter whether they're positive or not. If this is going in the a direction, sorry, in the x direction, but its magnitude is a, then I can call this thing, I can say, well, that's its length, a in the x direction. Okay, now the next thing I have to do is I have to go in the y direction. Which way is that? Again, I'm assuming that everything's positive just to make things simple. Which way am I going to draw my next vector? Right. I'm going to go to the right, right? Because that's positive y. If I drew the negative y, I'd actually be going this way. So I'm going to draw, and be careful with this, you'll definitely need a ruler. I'm going to need to go parallel to the y-axis in the y direction. Are you with me? And I'm going to go, let's see if I can do this reasonably clearly. I'm going to go how far? I'm going to go b. That's, that's how many you know, units I want to go. Or you know, there might be other units there. Okay. So there's B, and you can imagine where I'm going to go finally. I'm now trying to go C units in the Z direction, and you all established for me that's going up, isn't it? So just be careful what is up on your 3D space, right? You want to be parallel to that because that's what it means to go in the Z direction. So I'm just going to come away for a second. All right, let's put it there. And that's going to be C in length. So you can see now I have a way of actually visualizing what's going on and how I get to A, B, C. It's by actually connecting three different vectors in three different directions. So now I can label this point A, B, C. So how do I find the distance, say for example, from the origin to this point? How do we find distance on a regular Cartesian plane, what knowledge do we use? Back from year eight. We use Pythagoras, right? And we're going to use Pythagoras again. Uh, I'm going to use an old trick from um, your extension one course, which is to take 3D stuff, which hurts my brain on a flat surface, and turn it into 2D. There are a bunch of right angled triangles hiding in this diagram, and I just need to articulate them clearly. I'm going to start where I'm normally familiar, which is this bottom, you know, flat floor here, the x, the xy plane, okay? Can we draw the right angled triangle that's going to fit along here? And now owing to the fact that this is in three dimensions and I'm trying to represent perspective, that looks nothing lighter, like a right angle, right? But can you tell me where is the right angle hiding in this particular polygon? Where would you describe it as between? Xiaoyu? Um, the right angle is actually the angle 
Do you hear that? The right angle is formed by my A vector and my B vector. Now that is absolutely correct, but how can I know that she's right? So I think you give me a good answer. I want to see if someone else can work it out. Varen, you are very patient. What's your reasoning? Um, we know that A is parallel to X, mm -hmm. X axis, and B is parallel to the Y axis. Yep. And you know that the X axis and the Y axis is perpendicular. Yeah. Fantastic. This is the whole point of defining x, y, and z axes. They are each orthogonal to each other. So therefore, vectors that are parallel to those guys will also be orthogonal. With me, can you please draw this particular triangle here? But now, let's orient it in a way that we can actually see the right angle triangle going on. I think I can sneak it in up here. And as you can see, I'm going to do my very best to try and match colors so you can see what is going on here. <clears throat> So now I'm looking at the xy plane face on, right, directly on. And because this is just a right angle triangle on a plane, you guys can tell me what the hypotenuse is. Go ahead. I'll give you a clue. It starts with a square root, right? Yes, square root of? A squared plus B squared. Thank you. We'll just go straight to there. We're in extension two. We don't need to prove Pythagoras' theorem all over again. That's OK. If it makes you feel better, right by inspection. I'm now going to go from here into three dimensions. I was just dealing with x, y, right? Now, where is this other right angle triangle that I was mentioning? Where is it hiding? What do you reckon, Xiao? How would you describe it? Uh, between the vector a plus b and vector c. Between the vector a plus b, which is my dotted one here. Nice. Uh, I, I should probably put, you know, to actually represent, I was just representing lengths here, but you get the idea. So that guy there is a plus b. And then if you join it to c, that's going to be on a new plane. If you want it, by the way, that's also going to go through the z-axis. Do you agree? I'm going right in through the origin. Okay. Let's draw that. This guy here looks even less like a right angle triangle than this one does, but it is. It's just a trick of perspective. Again, the question, this one's a little trickier. Where's the right angle in this triangle? Where is it? What do you think, Alan? Yes, yeah, say it again. Uh, like from the origin to like the bottom triangle, like that one? Like the yeah, that one and then those ones. That one and then those guys. That's, that's exactly. Now, by the way, just can I point out, right? Calvin is wrestling with the same thing we're all, like this is just a limitation of this medium we're using. And your brains are going to struggle with it too. That's why notation is so very important in this, okay? Let me maybe draw this triangle face on, just like we did before, and maybe it'll be a little bit clearer. Uh, what have I got? I've got C. I'm going to draw that facing up. I don't know why I drew that so comically large. I've got as Zhao called it, A plus B, which is this dotted one, and it's on my, where am I? That's on my XY plane, on the floor, as it were. I should put that, oh, no, I've already got an arrow there, good, okay. So this orange line, do you see where it's going now? This is from, what is this, what's the name of that point that I'm starting at down the bottom? Origin. That's the origin, right? And then it goes up to our chosen point, that was a terrible marker to choose, our chosen point A comma B comma C. Right? So now, is it a little bit clearer which one is the right angle? It's going to be between, this is, I'm going to call it A plus B, and this one, I'm going to call C. You see where the right angle is? Why is the right angle between those particular vectors, these ones here? Think about the logic you used before, right? Very nice. This plane here, the xy plane, which a plus b sits on, do you agree? It's orthogonal to the z-axis and anything parallel to the z-axis, which c is. Okay? So we've got a right angle there. Uh, we already have this length, right? This length here is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. We've already got c up here. So what does that tell you from Pythagoras, again, a second time? What does that tell you about our actual final thing, our distance here? Again, it's a square root, right? What's underneath? A squared plus B squared plus E squared. Hooray! Pythagoras turns up everywhere, even nicely generalizing into three dimensions. Are you happy with that? Okay, now, why did we do this? Two reasons. I take that back. Three reasons. Number one, to just get you familiar again with the 3D world, but handling it in a coordinate system, which we've never done before. That was reason number one. Reason number two, we're going to be working out a whole lot of vectors, 
and magnitudes of vectors. How do you work out the magnitude of a vector? It's just with its length, right? It's distance between two things, okay? And then lastly, and this will be the last kind of cool, neat thing that we're gonna get out of here, and then I'm gonna set you to work. We can get a whole kind of shape out of this particular formula here, this distance formula, right? If we call this P, right? The distance of the origin to P is going to be equal to this square root, A squared plus B squared plus C squared. Now, remind me, so take a second, so think about it carefully. What kind of shape do you get? What kind of shape do you get if you have some particular point, and then you say, you know what, any point that is the same distance from that spot there, I'll include. In two dimensions, we would call this a circle, right? But as we generalize into three dimensions, we would call that a sphere, right? So a sphere is that set of points that all have a central defined distance, which we would call the, the radius. And then we say, well, I just measure from a particular point up to, well, let's see here. This is going to be a bit long, so you might want to draw, draw this long square root sign with me, right? My x wants to be some distance from a, because that's in the x direction. My b wants, sorry, my y needs to be some distance from b, because that's in the y direction. And then lastly, my z wants to be somewhere measured from c, because that's in the z direction. Now, of course, if you wanted and had something against radical signs, because you're like, who wants to write such a long thing, right? You would just square both sides. R squared equals x minus a all squared plus y minus b all squared plus z minus c all squared. And that's the equation of a sphere. Make sense? So, three reasons, hopefully. Familiarity with this 3D world. We will get to magnitudes of vectors. That'll be next lesson, just to remind you of how that works, but in three dimensions. And you're going to encounter some spheres in this exercise, and being able to recognize what they are is pretty important. It starts with distance, okay?